Shankara, or Shankaracharya, as he is also known, was born in South India about 1200 years ago and is considered the most important teacher in the tradition of Advaita Vedanta, the tradition based on the non-dual wisdom first taught by the rishis, the sages of ancient India. Shankara's importance is largely due to his clear and systematic unfoldment of Advaita Vedanta in his many scholarly commentaries and brilliant texts. One of those texts is Atma Bodha. We can't be sure if Atma Bodha was actually written by Shankara or by another great teacher in his lineage, but this text is traditionally attributed to Shankara himself. Atma Bodha is a simple work that uses many helpful metaphors to make these teachings more accessible. But the fact is, unless students are adequately prepared by the practice of meditation, karma yoga, and other disciplines, they might not be able to grasp the lofty truths expressed here. Therefore, Shankara begins, For those who are purified by austerities, who are contemplative, free from desire, and seeking enlightenment, Atma Bodha has been composed. Shankara didn't want anyone to assume that enlightenment could be gained merely through meditation, karma yoga, and other practices. Enlightenment ultimately requires Atma Bodha, the knowledge or personal discovery of your true divine nature, the inner self, Atma. As opposed to other spiritual practices, self-knowledge is the direct means for enlightenment. Just as fire is the direct means for cooking. Without self-knowledge, enlightenment is impossible. To cook rice, a pot and some water are necessary. But it's fire that actually does the cooking. In the same way, to become enlightened, meditation and other practices are necessary, but it is self-knowledge, Atma Bodha, that actually removes ignorance and enables you to realize your true nature. As Shankara explains, other spiritual practices can coexist with ignorance. So, they can't remove ignorance. Self-knowledge alone removes ignorance. Like light removes darkness. Suppose you were adopted and didn't know who your birth mother was. It's absurd to think that meditation or other practices could somehow remove your ignorance about her identity. So, how can meditation or other practices remove ignorance about your true identity, Atma, without self-knowledge, Atma Bodha? Because the true self, Atma, is covered by ignorance, when that ignorance is removed, Atma reveals itself, like the sun reveals itself when clouds drift away. The sun always shines, even when it's hidden behind clouds. In the same way, 
Atma always shines as the light of awareness, the light of consciousness, your consciousness, the consciousness by which you know all your thoughts, emotions, and sensations. When clouds drift away, the sun's brilliant orb is revealed. And when ignorance is removed, the true nature of your consciousness is revealed. But there's a problem here. If self-knowledge is required to reveal your true nature, then do you have to constantly think about Atma to remain enlightened? No, because... Ajnana kalusham jivam A person tainted by ignorance Jnana bhyasad vinirmalam is purified when ignorance vanishes due to self-knowledge. Then that self-knowledge itself vanishes. Jalam like the powder used to purify water. In ancient times, dirty water was sometimes purified by adding the finely ground powder of kataka nuts. Impurities suspended in the water would stick to the powder and settle to the bottom of the vessel, leaving pure water behind. This metaphor represents how Vedantic inquiry into the true nature of Atma removes the impurity of ignorance. When that process of self-inquiry successfully removes ignorance and comes to an end, then the mind falls silent and pure consciousness alone remains. Now, Shankara shifts his attention from the inner self to the world outside. If the world is as real as Atma, then Atma could be subject to suffering due to worldly events. But if the world is not as real as Atma, Samsara Swapna Tulyohi. The world is like a dream. Ragat Veshadi Shankulaha. Filled with pleasant and unpleasant experiences. Swakale Satyavad Bhati. It seems real. Prabhode Satya Sad Bhavet. Until you wake up and discover that it's not. In Vedanta, real is defined as that which always exists, that which doesn't come and go. Dreams come and go. Even the world comes and goes. The universe began with the Big Bang 14 billion years ago, and eventually it'll cease to exist. So the world is not absolutely real. It's not as real as the uncreated eternal self, Atma. Tavat Satyam Jagat Bhati. The world seems absolutely real. Shukti Karajatam Yata. Like a glittering seashell seems like a piece of silver. Brahma. Until Brahman is discovered Sarvadishtanamadvayam as the world's underlying non-dual reality. It's easy to mistake a shiny shell for a piece of silver. Such a mistake happens when you don't recognize the true nature of the shell. So too, it's easy to think that the world is absolutely real when you don't recognize its underlying reality, Brahman. Created from the sentient underlying reality, Nitye Vishnu Prakalpitaha Eternal and all-pervasive 
are all things that exist. Like a bracelet made from gold. Just like gold is the underlying reality because of which this bracelet exists, Brahman is the underlying reality because of which the world exists. This bracelet is nothing but gold, and the world is nothing but Brahman. This is the teaching of Advaita, non-duality. Now Shankara turns his attention to superimposition, or adhyasa. If your true nature as Atma is sat chit ananda limitless, all-pervasive, eternal consciousness, then why do you consider yourself a man or woman of flesh and bone? According to Vedanta, this takes place due to adhyasa, characteristics that actually belong to your body and mind, like gender, age, and intelligence, are superimposed on Atma. They're falsely attributed to pure consciousness. Yata kasho hrishi kesho. Like the space in many pots. Nano padigato vibuhu. All pervasive consciousness dwells in many bodies. Tad bhedad binavad bhati. And seems divided by them. Tannashi kevalo bhavit. In the absence of pots or bodies, space and consciousness remain undivided. This famous metaphor of how the same all-pervasive space is simultaneously present in many pots is crucial for understanding the oneness of Atma, the limitless consciousness that pervades the universe and is simultaneously manifest in countless living beings. The attributes of bodies like caste, color, status, etc. are superimposed on Atma like different tastes and colors are superimposed on water. Water continues to be H2O even when sugar or coloring is added. In the same way, Atma continues to be pure consciousness even when it's associated with your body and mind. Atma is utterly unaffected by any and all attributes of that body and mind. In the next three verses, Shankara describes your three bodies, three aspects of your individual existence with which Atma is associated. Your gross or physical body, known as Tula Sharira, your subtle body, or Sukshma Sharira, and your causal body, Karana Sharira. First, the physical body. Panchi Krita Mahabhuta Composed of physical elements Sambhavam Karma Sanchitam and born due to karma Shariram Sukadukkanam is the physical body where pleasure and pain Bhoga Yatanam Uchyate are experienced. The age, gender, and other qualities of your body get superimposed on Atma, pure consciousness, which has no age or gender. Next, the subtle body. Pancha prana mano buddhi. Having five vital forces, mind, intellect, dashendriya samanvitam, and ten faculties, 
Apanchikritabhutotham Made of subtle elements Sukshmangam bhoga sadhanam The subtle body is the means for experience. You superimpose the sharpness of your intellect and the happiness of your mind on Atma, pure consciousness. You superimpose the strength or weakness of your prana on Atma. And you similarly superimpose the strength or weakness of your five senses and your powers of action on Atma, which is utterly free from all these attributes. Finally, Shankara describes the so-called Karana Sharira, causal body, which really isn't a body at all. Anadya Vidya Nirvachya Beginningless, indescribable ignorance Karano Padiruchyate is said to be the causal body. Upaditritayadanyam Distinct from these three bodies, Atmanam Avadharaye is your inner self, Atma, which you should discern. Ignorance of Atma is said to be your causal body since it causes your subtle body to get reborn in a new physical body. This ignorance, too, gets superimposed on Atma. The three bodies Shankara described here are closely related to the five sheaths or koshas that he refers to next. In the presence of the five sheaths, Atma seems to acquire their natures. Like in the presence of a blue cloth, a clear crystal appears blue. Just like the blueness of the cloth can be falsely attributed to this clear crystal, in the same way, the qualities of your body and mind can be falsely attributed to pure consciousness, Atma. This false attribution or superimposition is to be removed with the help of Vedanta's teachings. Like rice kernels covered by husk, by threshing it with reason, Atma, the pure inner self, should be separated. Atma is figuratively covered by your three bodies, or five sheaths. To discover its true nature, Atma must be separated or distinguished from these coverings through the vigorous application of Vedanta's teachings. Now, Shankara explains the true nature of Atma as all-pervasive, unchanging consciousness. Sada sarva gato pyatma. Even though Atma is all-pervasive, it doesn't appear everywhere. In the mind alone it shines. Like a reflection on a shiny surface. The sun shines on the whole earth, but it's reflected only where there's a reflective surface, like an ocean, lake, or river. In a similar way, all pervasive consciousness becomes manifest wherever there's a suitable reflecting medium, a medium like your mind. Dehendriyamano buddhi separate from your body, senses, mind, intellect, 
prakriti bhyo vilakshanam and world independent tad vritti sakshinam vidyad as the witness of them all atmanam rajavat sadha like a king atma should be known thus Ministers perform their duties and run the kingdom in the king's royal presence. The king merely watches them. So too, in the presence of the conscious self, Atma, your body, mind and senses perform their various activities. Yet, your consciousness itself is not engaged in these activities. It remains as a passive witness. Here you might object. Whenever I do something like walking, talking or thinking, it certainly seems like my consciousness is fully engaged in that activity. Shankara explains, Ya pratish vindriyesh vatma. When your body, mind and senses are active, Atma also seems to be active due to ignorance. Drishyate bhreshu dhavatsu Like when clouds drift across the moon. Dhavan yivayata shashi It's the moon that seems to move. Sometimes clouds give rise to the illusion that the moon is somehow moving. It's the proximity of the moon and clouds that gives rise to this illusion. In the same way, it's the proximity of consciousness to your body and mind that gives rise to the illusion that your consciousness itself is active, when in fact consciousness remains as a passive observer like the king in the prior verse atma chaitanya mashrutya with the help of the conscious self atma dehendriya mano dhiyaha your body mind and senses svakriyarthesu vartante engage in various activities surya lokam yata janaha like people engage in activities with the help of sunlight. The sun doesn't actively participate in worldly activities. It merely facilitates those activities. In the same way, Atma doesn't participate in the activities of your body, mind and senses. It merely facilitates those activities. Now, Shankara explains in detail how various qualities and activities of your mind are superimposed on pure consciousness and falsely attributed to Atma. The qualities and activities of your body, mind and senses are attributed to pure consciousness, Atma, due to ignorance, like blueness is falsely attributed to space. You experience a blue sky, but space is colorless. Blueness can be superimposed on space. In the same way, the qualities and activities of your body, mind and senses can be superimposed on Atma. But like space has no shape or color, the conscious self, Atma, has no qualities or activities. Ajnanan manasopadi Due to ignorance, your minds qualities and activities are attributed to Atma. Like when the moon is reflected in water, 
चलनादीयताम भसह The water's ripples are attributed to the moon. In this famous example, the bucket represents your physical body. Water represents your mind. And the moon represents the conscious self, Atma. Ripples in the water seem to affect the moon, when in fact the moon in the sky shines unchanged. In the same way, ripples in your mind, your thoughts, emotions, and sensations seem to affect your consciousness, when in fact consciousness remains completely unchanged. Ragi cha sukha dukkha di Desire, pleasure, pain, etc. Uddhau satyam pravartate Are experienced when your mind is active. Sushuptau nasti tannashe But cease to exist in dreamless sleep when your mind is inactive. Tasmad buddhesh tu natmanaha Therefore, they belong to your mind, not to the conscious self, Atma. In dreamless sleep, your consciousness remains completely present. It observes or witnesses the total absence of activity in your mind. It's like being in a perfectly dark room with your eyes wide open. You can see, but there's nothing to be seen. So too, in deep sleep, you're conscious, but there's nothing to be conscious of. If pleasure and pain truly belong to the conscious self, Atma, then you'd experience them even in deep sleep. Prakashor kasya to yasya The sun's nature is brightness. Water's nature Chaityam Agnerya Toshnata is coolness, and fire's nature is hotness. Swabhava Satchidananda So too, Atma's nature is existence, consciousness, fullness. Nitya Nirmalata Atmanaha Changelessness and purity. But if your true nature is limitless, unchanging consciousness, as this verse says, why do you usually feel like a limited individual person who lives in a world of objects? Shankara explains, When Atma's pure existence and consciousness are united with your mind's activities, then, due to ignorance, you experience being an individual person. It's the combination of unchanging consciousness with the changing activities of your mind that gives rise to the experience of being an individual person, a jiva. Atmano Vikriya Nasti Atma is unchanging consciousness. Buddhir Bodo Najatviti And your mind is itself insentient. Jiva Sarva Malam Gnyatva Considering yourself an individual person, a jiva, Gnyata Drashteti Mukhyati You wrongly assume that you see and know objects. Even though your true nature is limitless, unchanging consciousness, due to identification with your body and mind, you take yourself to be a limited person, a jiva. Rajusarpavadatmanam Like misidentifying a rope as a snake, Jivam jnatva bhayam vahit misidentifying Atma 
as a limited person causes fear. Naham jiva paratmeti. If you know, I am Atma, not a jiva. Nyatam chinirbhayo bhavit. Then you will have no fear. Vedanta famously uses the example of a harmless rope in a shadowy place, mistaken for a deadly snake, to illustrate the consequences of ignorance. This verse shows how the teachings of Vedanta are meant to free you from fear and suffering, not to merely impart philosophical wisdom. Atma is constantly present in every experience, present as the consciousness by which the activities of your mind and senses are known. Yet, the true nature of that very consciousness remains concealed when it's hidden behind the so-called veil of ignorance. Shankara explains. Atma vabhasayat yeko. Atma alone reveals yapi. the activities of your mind and senses. Deepu gata like a shining lamp reveals a clay pot. But your mind and senses, being insentient, cannot reveal Atma. Light reveals objects, and that which doesn't emit light can reveal nothing. Your mind and senses are inherently inert. They have no consciousness of their own. Therefore, your mind and senses themselves can reveal nothing without the light of consciousness. Swabodhi nanya bodhi cha. No other consciousness is required to reveal Bodha rupata yatmanaha. The self revealing conscious self, Atma. Nadipas yanya deepicha. Like no other lamp is required, Yataswatma prakashani. To see a lamp shining by itself. Atma is self revealing, like a shining lamp. The purpose of Vedanta is not to reveal Atma, but to remove your ignorance of Atma's true nature, to eliminate your wrong conclusions and identification with your body and mind. After negating your body, mind, and senses, Neti neti ti vakyataha. With the teaching, neti neti, I am not all this. Vidyadaikya mahavakyair. Using the mahavakyas, you should realize the oneness jivatma paramatmano of your consciousness and Brahman. Mahavakyas are scriptural statements like tat. Twam asi, that thou art. Such statements reveal the complete identity of the conscious self, Atma, and Brahman, the underlying reality, because of which the world exists. The Mahavakyas express the highest truth of Vedanta, that consciousness itself is the very fabric of existence, the reality called Brahman. Avidyakam shariradi. Your body, mind, and senses, born of ignorance, Trishyam budavatsharam, are as impermanent as bubbles in water. Etad vilakshanam vidyad. You should know you are completely independent of them. 
Aham Brahmeti Nirmalam. Thinking, I am pure Brahman. To realize the highest truth, that your consciousness is identical to Brahman, is not a matter of grasping an intellectual concept or understanding a philosophical principle. It's a matter of direct personal discovery, to recognize something utterly remarkable about yourself that had previously been hidden from your view. To support the personal discovery or recognition of this highest truth, Shankara now gives several examples of Vedantic contemplation that are to be practiced along with meditation. Because I am not my body, I have no birth. Old age, decay, or death. I have no association with worldly objects. Because I am independent of my senses. It's your senses of sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch that interact with worldly objects, not consciousness itself. Because I am not my mind, I have no suffering, desire, aversion, or fear. Independent of my prana and mind, I am pure consciousness. As the scriptures say, your mind is subject to sadness. Your prana, vital force, is subject to weakness. But your unchanging consciousness is utterly unaffected by them. The next contemplations require no explanation. Nirguno nishkriyo nityo Attribute free, motionless, eternal. Nirvikalpo niranjanaha Thought free, stainless. Nirvikaro nirakaro Unchanging and formless. Nityamuktosmi nirmalaha I am eternally free and pure. Ahamakashavat sarvam I am like space. Pahirantargato chutaha Inside and outside of everything, immutable. Sada sarvasama siddho Always content, perfect. Nisango nirmalos chalaha Detached, pure and immovable. Nitya Shuddha Vimuktaikam Eternally pure and free Akandananda Madvayam Undivided fullness, non-dual Satyam Jnana Manantam Yat Real, conscious and limitless Param Brahmaham Evatat I am indeed that supreme Brahman. Evam nirantarabhyasta Through the constant practice of these contemplations Brahmai vasmiti vasana The conviction, I am Brahman Haratya vidya vikshepan Removes ignorance and identification Roga nivarasayanam Like medicine removes illness Contemplations like these are essential to help you realize the truths taught by Vedanta in a direct, personal manner, not as abstract ideas or intellectual concepts. This practice is crucial 
to assimilate or internalize these lofty teachings. Shankara now gives further instructions for meditation. Vivikta desha hasino. Seated in a solitary place. Virago vijitendriya. Free from desire, undistracted. Bhavayet ekam atmanam. You should meditate on atma being one. Tamanantamananyadihi. And limitless with unswerving attention. Atman yevakilam drishyam Merging the entire world into Atma pravilapya diyasudihi Through contemplation bhavayedekam atmanam You should meditate on Atma being one nirmalakashavatsada and eternally pure like space. When the process of inquiry explained in the first part of this text is accompanied by these Vedantic contemplations, you can become firmly established or deeply rooted in Atma Bodha, self-knowledge. In the next part of this text, Shankara describes the fruits of such firmly established, deeply rooted self-knowledge. Rupavarnadikam sarvam Giving up all identification with the body. Vihaya paramartavit An enlightened person. Paripurnam chidananda Whose true nature is limitless consciousness. Swarupenavatishtati Abides in that nature. First, you have to give up false identification with your body and mind and realize that their limitations and defects don't belong to you. Only then can you abide in your true nature as limitless consciousness. Distinctions between knower, knowledge, and known are absent in the true self, Atma. Because its nature is limitless, non-dual consciousness. Deepyate it alone shines. All knowledge takes place in your mind, but Atma is completely separate from your mind as the unchanging consciousness that illumines all its activities, all its thoughts, emotions, and perceptions. Anatma, like on a fireboard, Matane satatam krute. Constant drilling with the spindle of meditation, Uditavagatir jwala, kindles the flame of knowledge, Sarvagnyanendanam dahit, and burns up the fuel of ignorance. This beautiful metaphor is based on using a hand drill to start a fire. Persistent drilling with a wooden spindle produces friction and flames. In the same way, the persistent practice of meditation and contemplation produces firmly established, deeply rooted knowledge of Atma. Arune neva bodhena. Like at sunrise, the dawn of knowledge Purvam santama sehrute. removes the darkness of ignorance. Tataha virbhaved atma. Then atma reveals Swayam evam shuman eva. its own nature, like the shining sun. The ultimate truth, 
that consciousness is identical to Brahman, the fabric of existence, remains shrouded in dark ignorance until the dawn of self-knowledge, Atma Bodha. Atma tu satatam prapto. Even though Atma is always present, vidyaya. it seems absent due to ignorance. Tannashe when ignorance is removed, it seems like Atma is found. Bharanam yata. Like the gold chain on one's neck. A traditional story tells of a woman who looked everywhere for her missing gold chain. She eventually discovered that it had been hanging around her neck the whole time. She found what she already possessed. Such is the realization of Atma. Like a tree stump is mistaken for a thief, Krita Brahmani Jivata. Brahman is mistaken for a limited person, Jiva. Jivasya Tatvike Rupe. When the Jiva's true nature is discovered, Tasmin Drishte Nivartate. The mistake disappears. In the twilight, a tree stump might look like a menacing person and make you feel afraid or threatened. So too, you might feel threatened by the problems and defects of your body and mind until you properly discern your true nature as Atma. After realizing your true nature, Knowledge arises immediately and removes ignorance like I and mine. Like the sun removes confusion about directions. When you see the sun in the morning or evening, you immediately know which way is east or west. And when you discover your true nature, you immediately know that your feelings of individuality and possessiveness are completely baseless. Samyagvijnanavan yogi. Enlightened yogis see Swatman Yevakilam Jagat the entire world in themselves and see everything as non-separate from Atma with the eye of knowledge. Those who are enlightened experience duality like everyone else, but they aren't misled by their experiences. They know the underlying reality because of which everything exists to be non-dual Brahman, like clay is the underlying reality because of which many pots exist. Atmai Vedam Jagat Sarvam This entire world is Atma alone. Atmanonyanavidyate Nothing exists other than Atma. Vridoyadvadgatadini Like pots are nothing but clay. Swatmanam sarvamikshati Thus everything is seen as oneself. The Vedantic vision of oneness is to realize the underlying non-dual fabric of existence because of which the world of duality exists, the reality called Atma or Brahman. 
Now, Shankara describes the nature and behavior of an enlightened person. Jivan muktas tutad vidvan. By knowing Brahman, enlightened persons Purvo padi gunans tyajit. cease to identify with their bodies and minds. Satchidananda rupatvat. Because their true nature is limitless, unchanging consciousness, Bhavet Brahmarakitavat, they become Brahman, like larvae become wasps. In ancient pre scientific times, it was believed that wasp larvae were transformed into wasps due to their continual experience of wasps in the nest. This metaphor suggests how continual contemplation on Brahman makes you figuratively become Brahman by being firmly established in your true nature as Brahman. Crossing the ocean of delusion Destroying the demons of attraction and aversion. Yogi Shanti Samayukta. Yogis endowed with peace. Atma Ramo Virajati. Revel in themselves. This verse echoes the story of the Ramayana. Lord Rama crossed the ocean to reach Lanka, where he killed the demons Ravana and Kumbhakarna, and was finally reunited with his wife, Sita. In this metaphor, Sita represents Atma. Free from attachment to worldly pleasures, Atma Sukha Nirvrataha Content with the fullness of Atma Ghatasta Deepavat Swastaha Like a lamp shining inside a pot Swantareva Prakashati The enlightened ones shine, established in themselves. You can't see a lamp shining in an enclosed space. So, too, you can't tell if someone is enlightened or not by observing from outside. That person alone knows. Even though embodied by their bodies, the enlightened are unaffected like space. Sarvavin mudavatishted. Even though enlightened, they act like fools. Asakto vayuvacharit. Moving about without attachment, like the wind. Because the enlightened feel completely content and fulfilled, they have no plans, no goals, no agenda whatsoever. They simply respond appropriately to each situation, situations that arise according to their remaining karma. Upadi Vilayad Vishnu. When their bodies die, Nirvishesham Vishen Munihi. The enlightened merge into all pervasive consciousness. Jale jalam viyad vyomni. Like water into water, like space into space. Tejas tejas ivayata. Or like fire into fire. When water is poured into the ocean, it becomes non separate from the ocean. When a pot is broken, the space inside merges with the space outside. And in ancient times, when a flame is extinguished, it was believed to merge into the universal element, fire. In each case, 
the existence of water, space, and fire continues, undiminished and unabated, while its separateness comes to an end. Such it is for the enlightened at the time of death. Now, as he nears the end of the text, Shankara praises knowledge of Brahman. Gaining which, nothing remains to be attained. No other happiness. No other knowledge. That Brahman should be realized. Enlightenment is considered the greatest human achievement, the highest goal. It's a state of utter contentment in which nothing else remains to be accomplished. Seeing which, Nothing remains to be seen. Yet Bhutvana Punar Bhavaha. Becoming which, there is no rebirth. Yet Param Nyayam. Knowing which, nothing remains to be known. Tat Brahm Yavadharayet. That Brahman should be realized. Scriptures say that when the fire of knowledge destroys ignorance, all karmas accumulated in this life and past lives are also burnt up by that fire of knowledge. And in the absence of any remaining karmas, there's no possibility of being reborn again. Purnam extending endlessly around, above, and below. Satchidananda madvayam Limitless, unchanging consciousness, non-dual. Anantam nityamekam yat Infinite, eternal, and one. Tat brahmhetyavadharayet That Brahman should be realized. This section of the text sounds like a hymn or song with its repetition of the refrain, Tad Brahma iti avadharayet, that Brahman should be realized. Atad vyabhritti rupena Through a process of negation, Vedanta teaches that Brahman is non-dual. One limitless fullness. That Brahman should be realized. Vedanta's process of negation is apparent in its famous dictum, Neti, neti, not this, not this. When all wrong conclusions are negated, Brahman alone remains. Akhandananda rupasya Of Brahman's limitless fullness, Tasyananda lavashritaha Only a tiny portion, Brahmadhyastaratam yena is enjoyed by gods like Brahma, Bhavantyanandino Kilaha, who thereby become fulfilled. In Hindu mythology, the gods who dwell in heaven enjoy magnificent palaces, delightful dance and music, as well as sumptuous meals. But all those heavenly enjoyments are but a tiny fraction of the fullness of Brahman. Tadyuktamakilam vastu. Brahman is present in all objects. Vyavaharastadan vitaha. And in all activities. Tasmatsarvagatam Brahma. Therefore, 
Brahman is all pervasive. Chire sarpiri vakile. Like the fat in whole milk. The fat extracted from milk to make ghee is present in and through the milk. In a similar way, Brahman is present in and through the universe. Ananvastula mahrasvam. Neither tiny nor large, neither short, adir gamajamavyayam, or long, unborn, undecaying, arupa gunavarnakyam, without form, quality, or color, tat brahmhetyavadharayet, that Brahman should be realized. Each word used here to describe Brahman is negative in nature. These words negate or exclude everything that's not Brahman. Since Brahman is beyond time and space, beyond words and concepts, this language of negation is central to the teachings of Vedanta. Yad bhasa bhasya terkadi by which light the sun and moon shine, but which shines without the help of any other light, by which the entire world is illumined, that Brahman should be realized. Light represents consciousness here. Due to consciousness, you know what happens, both inside your mind and outside in the world. Yet, to know your own consciousness, no other consciousness is needed because your consciousness is self-revealing. Pervading the world and extending beyond, illumining the entire universe, Brahman shines like a glowing, red hot lump of iron. Even though iron itself doesn't produce light, when it's heated in a furnace and becomes red hot, it glows brightly. This metaphor shows how living creatures made of inert flesh and bone become sentient, awareful beings due to the presence of consciousness shining within them. Jagad Vilakshanam Brahma Brahman is other than the universe. Brahmanonyanakinchana. But nothing exists other than Brahman. Brahmanyad bhati chen mitya. If something other than Brahman seems to exist, yata marumari chika, then it is false, like a mirage. This verse can seem confusing. So, Consider this. Clay is other than a pot. But a pot is nothing but clay. Clay is the underlying reality because of which these pots exist. And yet, clay is completely independent of the pots. In the same way, Brahman is the underlying reality because of which the universe exists. And yet, Brahman is completely independent of the universe. Trishyate shruyate yad yad. All that is seen or heard is nothing but Brahman. Brahma. With knowledge, Brahman is realized to be identical 
Satchidanandamadvayam To your limitless, unchanging, non-dual consciousness. The last half of this verse expresses the highest teaching of Vedanta, tat tvam asi, that thou art. Tat refers to Brahman, and tvam refers to you, to your consciousness, the consciousness that's actually uncreated, unchanging, and all-pervasive as the very fabric of existence. In the final verses of the text, Shankara returns to the topic of enlightenment. Sarvagam Satchidatmanam The all-pervasive, unchanging, conscious self Jnana Chakshur Nirikshate is discovered with the eye of wisdom. Agnana Chakshur Nikshita one without the eye of wisdom cannot discover it. Bhāsvantam bhānumandhavatu Like the blind cannot see the sun. Even though the sun is self-revealing, it can't be seen by the blind. So too, even though the conscious self, Atma, is self-revealing, its true nature can't be recognized by the ignorant. Shravanadibiruddhipta Through the practice of Vedanta, Jnanagniparitapitaha You become engulfed by the blazing fire of knowledge. Jeevasarvamalanmuktaha And freed from all impurities. Svarnavadyotatesvayam Shining like gold. Gold is melted in a furnace to remove all its impurities. So too, a person is figuratively scorched by the fire of knowledge to remove the impurity of ignorance. Hridakashoditohyatma Atma abides in your heart as the light of consciousness, destroying ignorance, pervading the universe, sustaining all, and illumining everything. Consciousness dwells in your heart, so to speak, illumining the activities of your mind. That same consciousness simultaneously pervades the universe, illumining the minds of all. The final verse of this text is composed in a longer meter. Atma pervades all directions, times, and places. Sita dihrinitya sukam niranjanam Removing suffering and bestowing pure eternal joy. Yah swatmatirtam bhajate vinishkriyaha By worshipping at this holy pilgrimage place inside yourself, Sa sarva vid sarva gato mruto bhavit You become enlightened, limitless, and immortal. Pilgrims travel vast distances to arrive at holy places in the Himalayas or along the banks of sacred rivers. But the enlightened don't need to travel anywhere to reach the sacred reality that dwells within, the conscious self, Atma. With this verse, Atma Bodha comes to an end. In this brief text, Shankara imparted teachings that can lead you to personally discover what the ancient sages discovered and to become firmly established 
in that sacred wisdom.